Today's topic, public service loan forgiveness for positions and everything else you need to know about student loans in 2020. Here's the kicker. There is a lot of stuff pending right now in 2023. So as I record this video, currently late April of 2023, here is all the big news we have pending. First, when does student loan payments restart? Current guidance is it would be June, and then a 60-day wait would mean first payments actually start in August. Is there $10,000 or $20,000 of forgiveness? Still pending news from the Supreme Court. There's a SoFi lawsuit. That's right, SoFi has sued the federal government. And then on top of all that, we have a new payment plan called New Repay. So Revise Pay as you were, which we give the acronym Repay, R-E-P-A-Y-E, -E, which looks pretty appealing. It probably becomes the more popular student loan payment plan, or what we call an IDR, an Income Driven Repayment Plan. So what we're going to do is walk through a lot of those details. We'll walk through the updates, but we're also going to walk through a lot of big ticket items that just pertain to student loans in general. So this one will have a lot of important information, and it's likely a video that's going to have to get re-recorded rather soon anyway. So stay tuned. That's all coming up next. First up, let's just talk about loan types. Sometimes you just need to get to the foundational items when you get into loans. So first up is just types of loans. Most commonly, you're going to see federal loans, right? Today, the most common federal loan is what we call a direct loan. Direct loans can be subsidized or unsubsidized. If you scroll down below, we have a blog post in there, which also gives you the details to that. There's also something called Perkins loans. Perkins loans have not been issued since 2018. So they're not common going forward, but many individuals today that have loans could have a Perkins loan on there. And then you also have parent loans and you have grad plus loans, which are essentially on the graduate side of those. The big takeaway here, especially in terms of public service loan forgiveness, is back in the day, there would also be something besides a direct loan, there was something called a FEL loan, a federal family education loan. The important takeaway here is before those payments did not qualify for public service loan forgiveness. However, with new student loan rules, if you consolidate those to a new direct consolidation loan, they will not only be eligible now, they will be eligible for PSLF. You can also get those past payments to count. This has been a really important one. This initially was that Halloween deadline in 2022, and now it's currently in May. That'll likely get extended even further. I think already might be to 1231, but I think they're going to make this more permanent come July. Is still waiting for final guidance on that. But keep in mind, just on the types of loans, if you see a FEL loan, take advantage of your chance now to get it not only consolidated, but also make sure all those payments come over as well. And if you're thinking, how do I know if I have a private loan versus a federal loan? Go to the website called NSLDS. .gov, I believe it is. It's also in that blog post. The link is below, but it should be .gov. But this is where you can actually get your student loan file. You can see all the details in there. Check out your NSLDS file. That'll show you the difference. And if you have a private loan, private loans are a little bit more straightforward because you took that out from a private institution. The big takeaway I would say with private loans is just understand the promissory note. Understand the actual rules inside of that note. What happens if you can't make payments? What happens if you become disabled? What happens if you have a premature debt? So first section here is just types of loans, understanding the difference between federal and private. That one, I think, pretty straightforward. And keep in mind, if you ever do a refinance to a private loan, you can never go backwards. So if you're ever going to consolidate all your loans to get a lower rate, use air quotes because those lower rates seem to quickly be disappearing, you will never be able to get back into a federal program. So before you do that, make sure you've kicked the tires, hopefully had a financial advisor, even a student loan professional review those to make sure that it's the proper move. Because once it's done, it cannot be undone. So make sure you know what types of loans you have. The most favorite topic for our physicians, public service loan forgiveness, or what we call PSLF. So let's first walk through the rules of PSLF, some of the ways to get other benefits inside of PSLF, and then we'll work our way through some of the pivot plans as well. So the main number with PSLF is 120. Sometimes people take it as 10 years. While it does require 10 years to hit 120, 12 times 10, the key is actually 120. It does not have to be consecutive. So first up, 120 payments. These have to be federal direct loans. Before I would really emphasize this point, but now because we have the extra rules where we can get those style loans into that same bucket and still get past payments, 
it is a much more straightforward comment, just making sure that we're getting those into direct loads. Have to be at a qualified employer. Make sure your employer qualifies for PSLF. That is an important one. The other tricky one here for physicians sometimes can be working full-time. We usually describe full-time as more than 30 hours. If you're sitting there as a physician, you're like, oh, I definitely work more than 30 hours. I realize the average physician is well over that. But if you aren't any type of part-time work, usually we get down to about 0.8 FTE where most HRs will sign off. Remember, HR needs to sign off on what was full time. So if those are the main rules for public service loan forgiveness. Applying for public service loan forgiveness or even to apply for an account, they have a very traditional form that is pretty straightforward. It's not overly complicated. We have a link in the blog post below. You could also apply online now, which has been a really nice feature. And they'll also then send that for e-signatures to your past program, your residency program across the country, your fellowship midway through the country, wherever it would be, they can actually send that form for e-signatures now to the HR. This is a pretty recent addition. We're still trying to see how this is really going to work out. Some servicers, Mahala in particular, has always been adamant on we don't accept e-signatures. And now all of a sudden the government comes out with an e-signature form. So we'll see how that plays out. But neat addition here with that online form. You can also go old school on them and you can use that, send it to HR, HR will get in for you. But you got to apply the PSLF, right? You got to apply for it. On that form, you can mark, hey, I think I have qualified. I'm trying to get forgiveness or Hey, I just need to count. Can someone let me know where my tally is right now? And then another item I always like to embed in the PSLF conversation is, remember, your income driven repayment plan, which we're going to get to all those next, is based on your AGI, your adjusted gross income. So one way to lower your student loan payments, lower your AGI. So these are things that you can do on a pre-tax basis. Think 401k. 403B, HSA, I'll save in this account, FSA, flexible spending account. So are there are neat ways that you can lower your income while still saving for your future, whether that's retirement or just healthcare needs or dependent care, whatever you plug in there for those buckets that you'd be utilizing. But one good way to lower your student load payments, lower your AGI. So those are the main talking points we like to hit for public service loan forgiveness. You have real context in the blog post. Very popular topic, lots of good information out there as well, but we know that PSLF is a very hot topic and will continue to be a hot topic. Let's talk payment plans. We call these IDRs, Income Driven Repayment Plans. As we sit here today, there are currently five. Full disclosure, one of those is pretty much never utilized. We call it ICR, Income Contingent Repayment Plan. There are some unique circumstances where you may utilize that for a parent plus loan, but for all intents and purposes, we can put on that one now, in the blog post grow, I do have notes on that plan. The most common plans you see today are what we call IBR, which is income-based repayment plan. Here's the tricky part. Again, government program, it's always too confusing. There's an older IBR and then a new IBR. Believe it or not, the older IBR is the one that pretty much everyone's using today. The new IBR is not being utilized much. Actually, if they end up putting out the new repay, I don't think there's going to be many circumstances where even the new IBR is utilized. So you have an older IBR and a new IBR. Then one of the common ones that you're used to seeing probably is pay, which is pay as you earn. This is a very popular plan. If the new repay comes out, which I'm going to get to in a second, that will challenge pay in some circumstances, but pay will still have that payment cap. So for our higher earning physicians, pay could still be the winner, but we really like pay. The other one that's very popular is repay. So revise pay as you earn. The tricky part here is, will we end up having six payment plans or will a new repay replace old repay? Or maybe they'll just keep it super complicated and we'll have a new and an old repay. But cut repay, which again, just revise pay as you earn, Another popular one there. The big downside as we see there right now is you can only do married filing jointly. Technically, you can do married filing separately, but they will always pull in your spouse's income, your significant other's income in that example. So that's where it gets tricky. But new repay, which is not official yet. This is the one where they just had the comment period. There was over 8,000 comments. Our current thinking is that we will get general confirmation of this being completed by later 2023 we're thinking maybe november and then if all goes according to plan this would become live in july who knows what the final product looks like if you scroll down again we have the big ticket items that we're really excited for the main one that stands out to me is you could finally do married filing separately so now the new repay could get very attractive on that front so just a quick overview of all the different payment plans we're really talking about public service and forgiveness here but even if you're going more traditional forgiveness which is that's at a 20 years or even a 20 
25 years and then you get forgiveness, which is currently not taxable. But if that sunsets in 2025, that would be taxable. So that's where we always talk about that tax bomb per se. But you are also using one of these payment plans to get that type of forgiveness as well. So again, while we're focusing on PSLF, remember these IDRs, these income driven payment plans can be utilized for other types of forgiveness as well. Next up is just a guide to pay off your student loan. Right. What steps should you be following? For this part of the video, I actually will follow the blog post a little bit more closely. Again, the blog post will have more context to it. I'm going to use that to follow just to have a conversation here. So the first one is just getting organized, right? Half the battle is just getting organized. Do you have federal loans? Do you have private loans? How much? What's the rate? You have private loans. Okay. What the terms of that was the promissory note say? So part one is just getting organized. The second one we have on here is refinance your private student loans. So goes back to my earlier note. This is only for carving out private loans. So if you already had private loans, you want to see if there's a lower rate out there. This has nothing to do with your federal loans. Federal loans are on a separate island right now, especially why we're in forbearance for the CARES Act. Just keep those carved out and set those to the side. So this one is strictly referring to any private loans you already have. While rates have gone up, rates could still be lower than where they were when you first got that loan, or maybe your circumstances have changed where you're just a more appealing borrower. So that may get you lower rates. Step two there is just refinancing your private loans. The next one up here is determining your federal loan payment. So going back to all those IDRs that we just discussed is getting those loans organized and then making sure you have an idea of what the payment will be. Before COVID and before the CARES Act, it would just apply and you would know what your loan payment's going to be, right? Right now, we're in a period of time where we have to make assumptions. What tax return is being used? We haven't made payments in essentially three years at this point. When are they going to update the actual tax return? Are we out updated with a pay sum? Are we updated with the tax return? So there's some moving parts here, but number three in general is just making sure you understand where your federal loan payment is going to end up being at. Number four on this one is just knowing your forgiveness options. What are you going after? If it's PSLF, fantastic. The kicker here is that there's actually a lot of other forgiveness programs. PSLF gets all the fame because you're thinking like, hey, I can wipe everything out in one big swing here. But there are other programs that you can take advantage of. If you're a physician in a healthcare shortage area, the VA, VA has their own program set up. So there's a lot of different programs. We actually have a good link below. We wrote a guest blog post before for the white cut investor. And we walked through some of the not so common ones. So check out that post. We have some other ones in there. But the key is here, just making sure you know what you're going for. Ways to expedite your loan payment. If this makes sense for you. If you're going for PSLF, do not expedite it. You do not get a, an award for paying extra on your student loans when they would have been forgiven. But this is one where we go through using a signing bonus, maybe joining the military, if that makes sense for you, working in the healthcare shortage areas, other ideas to lower your student loan burden. But in this example, remember, we're not going for PSLF. This would be an example of us trying to expedite that. Now, some of those might be able to work nicely together, right? You could still be going for PSLF and get some of those items to help you, right? health shortage area. That could be one of those where you're going to lower your burden, but you're still going for PSLF. So think of it as a qualifying organization, but it's still in a healthcare shortage area. We'll lower the payments as much as we can or lower principal balance, but in the long run, we're still going for PSLF. VA, same exact problem. Same exact problem that we're going to have there in a good way. And the idea of, hey, we're going to utilize the payments from the VA to lower our debt amount, but we're still going for PSLF. And I, I always describe it to our physicians as just a backup. And that's one of those ones we like to take advantage of as well. So those are just your steps, your high level steps to get your loans organized, whether you're going for federal for your miss or you have some private loans in there or a combination of both. There should be good steps to help get you organized. How long will it take to pay off your student loans? Pretty common question. I think a lot of individuals don't ever understand the magnitude of what these payments could look like. So to end this blog post, we actually added some examples of balances, interest rates, and then different time frames, anywhere from five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. This is again, thinking of private payoff or if you are gonna keep them as federal loans, or you're going to pay them off without any type of forgiveness, whether you're going to be more aggressive on a loan or if you're just going to follow your current guidelines. So we use some examples. Dennis Smith had 300000 at a 7% interest rate. Just to give you context, I'll pick one from each, and then you can also go through the blog post. If Dennis Smith wanted to pay off that 300000 at 7% in 10 years, you're looking around $3,483 per month. Dr. Lee has $600,000 in debt at a 6% interest rate. If Dr. Lee wanted to pay her loans off in 10 years, she'd be paying right around $6,661. And then last but not least, Vet Scott, who has $150,000 in loads at a 5.5% interest rate. If he were to pay it off in 10 years, he'd be paying right around $1,628.
Again, we use 5, 10, 15, and 20 years. But I use this section just to add some context because I don't think we understand before we start paying loans of what that could look like. But student loans for our physicians and really our medical professionals in general will become a large payment. Even if you're going for PSLF, when you get that attending pay, those payments can jump up. And as I always lovingly say, it's your first mortgage that you didn't know you were taking on. So... There's some context on really the private side there, but even if we are going for PSLF or one of the other federal programs, we're still gonna have a larger payment to, to plan for, so be prepared for that. And there you have it. The craziness of the student loan world as we sit here currently in 2023. As I noted at the start of the video, we have four huge pieces of student loan information that we're really still waiting on answers for, so stay tuned. In the black post, I usually will jump in there and update things as we see news happening. With that, we'll usually put a timestamp at the top of the blog post as well, just to add some more context to when it was updated. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Spend the last 15 minutes with me or so here. If you have not subscribed, now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel. If you click the little bell icon, you'll get a notification every time we release a new video. If we were a student loan only YouTube channel, you'd probably get a lot of pings because that's about as much breaking news we're getting right now in the student loan world. So stay tuned for any breaking news there. And as always, I'll catch you on the next video.